So this is the project for issue with you, and I'm gonna just uh, play it from the start. So there you have it. The BPM is 143 BPM. And something interesting about this song is that um, the time signature is 7-8. And um, that's why it's got this very interesting rhythm about it, like boom, 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 which I think is really, really cool. So let's get to it. Let's start with the percussions. So, um, as usual, I really like Trailer FX1 and it's got all these very interesting sounds. It's big drum sounds, you know, big hits that you can use and uh, what I did was I used uh, these sounds. Just to give it a bit of that you know, bigness about it, right? And um, here we have the European Folk Kit, which you can find under World European, European Folk Kit. And um, yeah, here's how it sounds. It's got all these very nice big sounds about it. Especially if you add a reverb, and this reverb, uh, it's a pretty big reverb. It's actually under large spaces, halls, opulent ballroom. Um, it's got this really big space about it, which is what the original track had. And I'm sending everything through that single opulent space reverb. So the trailer FX is, oh, it's not going through that. Uh, but the European kit is going through that. And this is just another part of the European kit. I just uh, cloned the track. And... Nice big drums. That's what I really like about European kit. And if you add all those together, you get this. And the reason why I didn't send this one through a reverb is that the European kit has plenty of reverb already and you don't want to sort of muddy up the reverb. This one is sort of just giving the weight. It's got a sort of reverb tail to it already, so you don't want to sort of add reverb to the reverb. And I think it sounds pretty great just by itself. I really like this 7-8 rhythm that they got going here. And, um, I added these small drums, which is which are playing the 16th notes. So um, you can see them here yeah, playing this. And I used a studio toolkit, which I really like because it's got all sort of little percussion tools that you can use. It's under uh, drums and percussion, acoustic drum kits, studio toolkit. And here's how it sounds. 
just toms, 16 toms. Doesn't sound very natural because, you know, there's no real round robin going on here and stuff like that. But that's what we got, so let's use that. I pan it to the left with a little reverb going here. And I pair that with an Asian kit that's panned to the right. So I like to pan uh, things left and right so that you get a sense of width going about it. And um, let's listen to the Asian kit. Not particularly organic, but you know, put them together. And of course, um, what I did as well was that I transformed it with a humanize with, uh, to 10 ticks, random, and then I selected and operated. And you get a bit of sort of more organic feeling putting them together. Still not too great. You get a bit of that typewriter da -da 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 thing going. But if you put them low and you add them together with the whole big drums, it kind of adds to the whole sound. It kind of works. Now, the big drums, I always like to have a little bit of sort of a high end a little bit about it. So brushes tend to do the trick. They have that ch -ch -ch kind of thing going, a bit of a snare kind of feeling. And I use snares here. And I sent it to the bus as well. And of course, for this, I didn't want the snares to be too hard. So normally with snares, if I turn this enveloper off, you get a little bit of a of an attack and it's not really uh, suitable for this particular thing you soft attack whoa that's a lot of attack soft attack regular so i just wanted to get the tail end of it and when you put that together with the big sounds you kind of get a nice top end You might not hear it so much, so I'm going to take out a bit of the big drums and just play a few of the drums and hear how it sounds. So with the European kit. And if you take it out, not so much top end with the snares now. A bit more complexity to the sound, which I really like. Now, um, so we got the drums for the big part sorted. And they're pretty much repetitive, so you know, I just copied them over, kind of works. Now, the, th the main star of the show, uh, the strings. What I gathered from uh, the original version is that they had a violinist come in and then they sent the acoustic violin sounds through a distortion. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use the EXS factory pop strings, Arco strings, because it's the solo string that you can get with uh, standard logic. I'm going to turn off everything, and here's how it sounds. It's not super fantastic, but you kind of get the bass vibe. So we know it's distorted, so I sent it through an amp. And in this case, I used a uh, distorted mid-range shine, which I found to be quite close to the original sound. So you get this. Ah, I'm starting to get it. If you notice, there's a bit of a weird sound to the strings when I play them. It's because, um, first thing is I changed the glide. It's now 30 milliseconds and it's a mono. So you only get one note at a time. You get this little slide. And that helps give a bit of that organic violin feel. And um, yeah, I think it works. So that's how I adjusted it, remember? Uh, change it to mono. And just put the glide to about 30 milliseconds, which I find that's what works. Now, I also I did something with the pitch bend. Um, the pitch bend, I changed it to 3, which meant I could do this. 
which means I could slide the note up with the pitch wheel. And sort of get a bit more of that real violin sound, which is what I did as well. So I did a bit of channel EQing, not very much, you can see over here and here, just to get a bit of more high end and mid end. And of course, quite a generous bit of reverb. Ah, not too bad. So, if I play it with the... And the second section as well, it's got this really low growl that comes up with the pitch band. So, you know, using the pitch band in ways that work if you listen to the strings, now with the pitch band and everything. I think it's fair to say that it sounds pretty similar, it's quite sweet, you know. Whatever it is, I think the mood is captured. You know, it's got that, got that aggression, it's got that uh, whole, you know, distorted vibe about it. So putting it together, sounds like this. Let me just kind of copy it over. And now let's talk about the second section. Now, for this section, I did something that's a bit uncommon. Um, you know, Hans Zimmer has this little spiccato strings that go on. It sounds a bit like delay. Um, I found that the strings didn't really, couldn't really do that very well for standard logic. So what I did was I used a standard full strings legato from the strings library. And I added a tremolo. And uh, these are the settings at a 16th rate. Pretty deep with very little smoothing. And it sounds like... So it's a bit of a cheat, but the thing is, you're not going for accuracy here, you're going for feel, right? And um, I think that works out. So there's an orchestral kit here as well, under percussion orchestral, just to get the right sounds. Because this part's much quieter than the start, so Here's what we did. So it's more subtle and those little snares are from the studio brush kit. Most of these sounds, when you hear them by themselves, they sound a little bit, you know, sort of uh, mechanical. But when you put them together, they sound pretty alright. And as always, it's always good to humanize all these sounds just to give it a bit more, you know, uh, organic kind of feel. So with the strings on the tremolo, they sound like this. I didn't know any funky four part type thing here. I just decided what sounded good and just put them together. And uh, if you notice, the strings have this automation about it, volume automation, because that's how we give it a bit more life. And when you listen to it, I think there's more sort of um, organic playing a live feeling to it, more expression to it. And for the line in the slow section, I use a legato violin. Uh, I found that it's better than a legato viola because the tone was better. And I paired that with an EXS strings because just to give it a bit more body because I find that EXS strings has that right body about it. So I paired that. And um, yeah, and I just copied the MIDI over and I copied the MIDI over to another 
track, which is a French Horns Legato, one of my favorites. And just to fatten it up a bit. Just a bit of that. You can automate this just to give it a bit more um, expression to it. I didn't, but it's fine. And here, the bases start coming in. So this one is just a bass staccato that you can find in the orchestra library. Strings, bass, staccato. Going with the rhythm. And you can see this section here gets a bit bigger. So this section we have double notes. And uh, it just keeps on going, getting bigger and bigger and bigger until these parts are the low ends that's just uh, just sitting below there just to give it that rhythm. So when you put it all together, uh, there's this section as well. You can see that the full strings legato get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger just to give that vibe of, you know, like we're going to crescendo onto something really, really big, which is the second section of it. And you can see that the European Folk Kit does the same thing just to give a bit of a crescendo. So there's a bit of automation going on um, on the trailer FX as well, just to bring it up to the big section. So let's have a listen to that. The thing is, this part here, if you look at the MIDI, there's a lot of MIDI going on here. Just more and more notes getting stacked on top of each other. But it helps give that fatness, that, that, that growing feeling towards the crescendo point. And um, yeah, I think it works. And this part here is very similar to the early section, except that it's bigger. So there are basses now supporting the rhythm. And there's this, like, symbols. So, so there's symbols on top of this. And um, there's another thing, which is an Eastern solo. So for the melody, I added a double melody. I just copied the MIDI over and uh, there's this Eastern solo, which is kind of like a voice. World, Middle Eastern, Eastern solo. I take out this amp here. Because I felt like the solo at that section had a bit of that voice-like feeling. So I wanted to add it a, I wanted to add a layer of voice on top of that, just to fatten it up. And I also sent it to mid-range shine. So together it sounds a bit fitting. 